My name is Michelle Plyme. I'm the program coordinator with the Long Island Pine Barren Society, which is one of the founding members of the Long Island Clean Water Partnership. And I'm here with Andrea Spilka, who's the president of the Southampton Town Civic Coalition. Um, so we're just going to ask, a, I'm going to ask her a few questions about her involvement in Long Island's water and um, the experiences that she's had along the way. So Andrea, uh, why should Long Islanders care about their, the water? Well, um, <laughs> there, for lots of reasons. As far as I'm concerned, it's the lifeblood um, of our health and our economy. We're surrounded by water. Everything we do in terms of um, our drinking water, um, if we want to go fishing, if we want to go to uh, the beach, if our vineyards, our farms, all require good, clean water. And sadly, as we hear from the scientists, the water isn't nearly as good as it should be. And uh, you can't help but open up a newspaper and read about a closed beach or a fishing bed that's been closed. All of that hurts not only our health, which is very serious, but it also hurts our economy. Mm, that's so true, yeah. And like you said, everyone loves the beach on Long Island, mm -hmm. so not being able to go to the beach, that's you know, yeah. scary to many. <laughs> yeah, and of course I left out too, not just going to the beach, but it's a tourist spot. Mm -hmm. So what would happen mm -hmm. if tourists had no reason to come here? Yeah, that's true. That's so true. Um, so what could our community be doing to protect Long Island's quality and what's, what is it not doing? <laughs> um, well, the good news is that at all levels of government, I think they're finally realizing, um, mm -hmm. um, as, as partly as a result of the work that folks like the partnership have done to promote the, the need for good, clean water so that they are talking about making more money available, but we're not sure how much money that's going to be. So we need to um, keep lobbying the, every candidate, every town member, every politician of, at any level to say, we care about our water, we need clean water. For, we know it's a problem, it's been right, established, we know exactly. what needs to be done, but we don't, need, we don't have the finances yet. Exactly. <laughs> and. Um, on the East End, of course, we've already taken an important step. I thank everybody who voted for the extension of the Community Preservation Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, again, sponsored in, and, and promoted in large part by the partnership um, to extend the um, money available through the Community Preservation Fund, as well as allowing 20% of new money to go just for water quality. Um, but there are other things that, that could be happening. For example, I think we need better regulations. Um, I, one of the things I've been advocating for with my civics as well as um, groups like yours um, to make sure that um, there are incentives for advanced wastewater treatment. Um, I want a mandate that every new um, home that's built is required to mm -hmm. have an updated septic system or um, nitrogen reduction system. Um, I want there to be some real penalties if you don't comply with that. Not as much for the, the small homeowner, but when we see all these big developments mm -hmm. being built and there really isn't the attention um, to um, border quality as, as they try to make their money, you know, I think that's important. Right. I think as the projects are being built, there's so much attention on them, but there's no actual follow-up. There's no, you know, exactly. no one's tracking how, you know, how they're following through. And that goes promises. to my other point. Perfect, Michelle. Thanks. Because <laughs> one of the things I want is to have more staff at all levels of government mm. to monitor what's happening. You know, they may mandate it, but if there's no enforcement or there's no, mm -hmm. you know, monitoring so afterwards, then, um, you know, who knows what happens. And Sadly, we've seen all too often that you know septic systems fail, that, that things don't work, and they're not done quite the way they should. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Yeah. Um, so, kind of answered this a little briefly already, but um, what is the biggest hurdle that Long Island has for our water quality? A uh, couple of things. Um, you know, I guess if I had systems, to, that's you know such a big. It's going to be right, a long money, process. Right. Lots team. of right. Lots mm -hmm. of money. Um, but I think one of the misconceptions is that um, people think that you can't, that, that there has to be a disconnect between protecting the environment and protecting our water quality and, and um, our, you know, moving our economy forward mm -hmm. at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive, and if we do it right, we can work together 
to um, build in the right places, build carefully, um, to uh, make sure that we're not um, spending more money on reclaiming what's lost mm. after an environmental disaster or, you know, a flood or whatever. Right, more preventative then, measures. More preventative, mm -hmm. thank you, more mm -hmm. preventative me measures than we are for doing it right the first time. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. And like you said, it's so much more of our, our, our economy. Even we're seeing as these, you know, shellfish beds are improving, there's more oyster, and, you know, that's going to contribute to the economy as well, so, you know. It all comes back mm -hmm. to the economy. The truth is, though, that we're spending lots of money to reseed mm -hmm. these fishing beds. Mm -hmm. But if we hadn't overdeveloped in the first place, <laughs> then, you know, it wouldn't be necessary. So yeah. it's, um, I, I think we have to rethink our priorities. And as far as I'm concerned, making water quality the first priority because it is our economy. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's our health. <laughs> and it is our health. <laughs> So how can Long Islanders get involved in, in what you do to protect Long Island's water quality? <laughs> well, they can be like me. I'm a volunteer. Um, and when I moved out here, the first thing I was doing was reading the newspaper and, and reading all about um, the news about water problems and um, ways to improve the environment. Um, join a local organization, civic organization. They're all focused on water quality. Um, join the Clean Water Partnership, and I'm hoping, and Michelle, at the end of this, you'll give everyone the um, uh, email address and the uh, the link yeah. to uh, how to get onto your web page. Um, it's but the other thing that they can do is um, one of the things I like about working out here um, in a, a, a town. Um, I work both in Brookhaven and in um, Southampton. People, you can really make a difference at, at, our, at this level mm -hmm. and so I'm hoping that folks will go to a town board meeting and speak up and say water quality is really important I care about this ask you know when you have meet the candidates night mm -hmm. whatever the party both every party should be focused at this point on water quality ask the candidates what are your plans to do how do you plan to offset what we've done in the past and make sure that going forward, we really make a difference. Um, what I keep you know, coming back to are things like, we can't protect water if we don't protect the land around it. Mm -hmm. And so we need to do both aspects of it. We need to start cleaning up the water and um, making sure that these uh, improved systems are installed and, and um, monitored. But at the same time, we also have to make sure that we make good land decisions mm -hmm. where they're concerned. Yeah. And if you can, you know, if you are replacing your septic system or you need to in the upcoming years, maybe look into these improved systems, you know, take the initiative yourself as a homeowner well, to do that yeah, if possible. One of the <laughs> things, right, and it, again, they are trying to bring the cost down. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're lobbying for, and again, please join the cause, um, <laughs> is the idea that um, there should be money for uh, to incentivize mm -hmm. um, do uh, putting in in you know especially for individual homeowners or commute they are looking into little community mm -hmm. um, systems so that if they're incentivized then the cost goes down for every person and and that's the thing it we should we're going to pay money either way we should be paying the money up front to get it done right. Right, right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Andrea, oh, thank for, you for joining having us on here. Uh, so if you can, like Andrea said, join us on longislandcleanwaterpartnership.org and sign up for our newsletters and our emails. Um, that would be great. Thanks.